Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing dihedral groups. Okay, right. Uh, so, we're currently in the process of looking at examples of dihedral groups. Okay, so we've looked at D1, D2, and D3, and they were all a little bit disappointing because they were actually all equal to S1, S2, S3, respectively. Okay, so we hadn't actually found any new interesting groups that we hadn't already seen. Okay, so, that's going to change now. We're going to look at D4, which is going to be something new. Okay, it is not going to be the same as S4. Okay, right, so let's have a look at D4 then. Okay, right, so for D4 we're going to be looking at set permutations of a set containing four uh, numbers. So one, two, three, and four. And the normal thing is going to happen, we're going to create this disk, okay? So here's our disk, and we're going to put our four numbers evenly spaced around it, okay? So they're all going to be 90 degrees apart from one another. Okay, and we now want to look at all set permutations that we can create of uh, this set of four elements by creating real-world maneuvers. And this is not, repeat, this is not going to just equal S4. We are not going to be able to create every possible permutation, okay, by a real-world maneuver. And the reason for that is that you've always got to send neighbours to neighbours, basically, because of the way that, you know, three is neighbours with four and two and not one. Okay, that really, the way that they're arranged on the disk, that is what curtails uh, the uh, ability to generate all possible set permutations. That's why we can't generate all possible set permutations of this set of four elements uh, by just doing these real-world maneuvers of the disk. Okay, right. So, uh, let's firstly think about the set permutations that we can achieve by just doing rotations within the plane, okay? So the set permutations that we had when we were considering C4, the cyclic group of, on four elements. Okay, so of course we'll have the identity, so let's just draw that out, which is do nothing, basically. Rotation by zero degrees, no flips, nothing at all. Okay, so we just send everything to itself. Okay, so we will, of course, as usual, give that the symbol I. Okay, and I think I'll colour code each of these. So here is I in orange. Right, okay, now, then we'll have rotation by 90 degrees. So let's just put this one in. So 1, 2, 3, and 4, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So when we rotate by 90 degrees, we'll send 1 to 2. Okay, we'll send 2 to 3. We'll send 3 to 4. And then 4 will go to 1. Okay, so as usual, we'll denote that sigma. Okay, and then we can express all the other rotations as powers of sigma. Okay, so next up, let's have rotation by 180 degrees. Okay, which is just do sigma twice, basically. Rotate by 90 degrees twice, so we'll denote this sigma squared. And what's the overall effect of it? Well, you'll send 1 to 3. Okay, that's 1 going round to 3. 2 will go round to 4. Okay, 3 will go round to 1. Here, and 4 will go round to 2. Okay, so there is our uh, set permutation which will denote sigma squared, our rotation by 180 degrees. Finally, let's have rotation by 270 degrees, which of course uh, we can denote sigma cubed because it's just rotate by 90 degrees three times now. Okay, uh, and what will that send everything on to? 1 will now go to 4. Okay, 2 will go to 1. 3 will go to 2, okay, effectively it's rotation anti-clockwise by 90 degrees, and 4 will go to 3. Okay, right, so that now is sigma cubed here. Okay, so we'll denote sigma cubed in blue here. Right, okay, so those are the um, set permutations that we had in C4. Okay, let's now add in the new ones that we get by being able to flip this uh, disk. Okay, so let's flip it in all lines of symmetry. So we'll start off with this line of symmetry here, down the middle there. Okay, so 1 and 3 will be hold constant. They'll stay where they are, but now 2 and 4 are going to get swapped. Okay, so let's put these new ones in the line below here. Okay, right. So now what we're going to have is a transposition of 2 and 4. So 2 will go to where 4 is, 4 will go to where 2 is, 3 will stay where it is, and 1 will also stay where it is. So in the normal sort of notation, we will denote this transposition of 2 and 4, tau to 4. Okay, right. 
next line of symmetry then. Okay, let's now take the line of symmetry. Uh, in fact, actually, rather than doing that one now, I'll leave that one for a moment and I'll do this one here because this one is again very similar to this one. Okay, the one down there is a little bit more complicated. Okay, so let's do the line of symmetry here. Now we'll hold 4 and 2 constant and we'll swap 1 and 3. So we'll now get the transposition of 1 and 3. Okay, so let's put this up here. Okay, so we'll now transpose 1 and 3 around, swap 1 and 3, and 2 and 4 will both be mapped onto themselves. So we'll again call that tau 1, 3. Okay, and I'll denote tau 1, 3 in yellow here. Now let's consider the other lines of symmetry then. Okay, so we've got this line of symmetry here. Okay, now this is going to move everything, of course. So this will swap 1 and 2 around. So 1 will go to where 2 is and 2 will go to where 1 is. So let's just put that on first. So here we go. Uh, so 1 will be mapped on to where 2 is here and 2 will be mapped on to where 1 is. And 3 and 4 are going to get swapped around as well. So we'll move 3 to where 4 is and 4 to where 3 is. Okay, so we'll call that transposition of, and we'll put this like so, we'll have brackets 1, 2, denoting that 1 and 2 are going to be swapped, and then 3 and 4, denoting that 3 and 4 are going to be swapped. That's a common way to show which elements are being transposed here. Okay, right, then the final line of symmetry, okay, the final line of symmetry is this one here, and we'll be swapping 1 and 4 around, and 2 and 3 around, okay, so this one will be a messy one to draw out. Okay, so let's just show this. So we're going to be swapping 2 and 3 around, like so, and then this is where it becomes messy. We're going to be swapping 1 with 4 and 4 with 1, okay, like so. So this is a transposition of 1 and 4 and 2 and 3 there. Okay, and what colours left? Okay, it will end up going in purple. Oh, and we've got orange twice, but never mind. Okay, right, so those are all of the set permutations that are going to have symbols, and we've given them their symbols now, that are going to make this set D4, basically. So D4 now, let me build D4. So D4, the set that underlies D4 is going to be I, sigma, sigma squared, sigma cubed. Okay, then we're going to have these transpositions, transposition of 2 and 4, transposition of 1 and 3, the transposition of 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, and the transposition of 1 and 4 and 2 and 3. Okay, so we've got a set of symbols here, and we will then define a composition law on this. So we'll have a great big composition table here. Okay, we'll put all eight elements here, we'll put all eight elements here, we'll call the composition abstract composition, and then you'll have to fill in all 64 entries here. Okay, and to work those out, you'll have to compose the set permutations together in the appropriate order, because this isn't going to end up being an Abelian group. Okay, you're going to have to compose them together in the correct order, so remember that x composed with y means do y first, then do x. The reason uh, that uh, it means do y first and then x is that we think of it as we think of it like a function, basically. And if you had something like this, okay, uh, let's say it was working on a little t, which is an arbitrary element in this set, uh, then it would mean do y first and then do x. That's the reason that we think of this one as being done first and then this one. Okay, so when you take a little x from here and compose it with little y, what you will do is you'll go back to thinking of, of these symbols as representing these set permutations. You'll do the set permutation corresponding to y first, then you'll do x. You'll combine them together to get a net set permutation. Then you'll say what symbol represents that net set permutation, and you'll put that answer in here in the composition table. And I assure you that will form a group. It will be closed is the main thing that you might be wondering. Okay, we have got every possible real-world maneuver covered here. Okay, there are no other ones. Okay, so when you compose two real-world maneuvers together, you have to end up with another real-world maneuver, so you will end up with one of these back again, basically. 
Okay, so it will be closed. It will have associativity because we're thinking in terms of set permutations. Okay, it does have the identity. We've got the identity here, okay, represented by the symbol I, and it will have inverses. Any, all of these will have their inverses, basically. Okay, in the case of all of these transpositions, they are their own inverse. Okay, in the case of these uh, rotations, sigma and sigma cubed are each other's inverses, and sigma squared is its own inverse, because when you rotate by 180 degrees um, twice, that obviously goes to uh, rotation by 360 degrees. So there are inverses in here as well. Okay, now I'm not going to go through the entire composition table because uh, there are 64 entries and it does take a long time to, you know, push all of, draw all of these out and work out what uh, the net set permutation is and therefore work out all of the answers. But in principle, you could do it. Okay, right, so that now concludes our discussion of dihedral groups. I hope that you'd now be able to continue on, and if you wanted to uh, go on and look at the elements of D5, you'd be able to do so, and D6 and D7 if you wish. Okay, right, from D4 upwards, they are different from their symmetric groups, and they are different from the cyclic groups. In fact, they're in between them, basically. It's bigger than the cyclic group of uh, the corresponding number of elements, and uh, it's smaller than the symmetric group of the, on the corresponding uh, number of elements, basically. Okay, right, so that concludes our discussion.